Hello, this is Danny Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. Last week, Inside Star Citizen featured the player experience team and also included numerous mentions of both the Eva Cotti and one of the tools that they both use, the Issue Council. And I realize that there isn't much content about either, which may prove to be a challenge because just like Fight Club, one of the rules of Eva Cotti is don't talk about Eva Cotti. So I won't, at least not directly. Over the years, I've done a lot of early testing of MMOs, including Asheron's Call, Dark Age of Camelot, City of a Hero, Star Wars Galaxy, and A Tale Told in the Desert. So being part of Evocati suits my personality, but it may not for everyone. One big part of whether something like Evocati is right for you is how do you feel about finding bugs in the game? It has to be less like this, and more like this which can sometimes be a difficult attitude to take. It's easy to think that after spending a couple hours on two dozen attempts to trying and failing to get out of the landing zone without crashing, that you wasted a bunch of time and didn't test anything. But that is wrong. You produced two dozen crash logs. And that is valuable. You don't think that line at the bottom of the patch notes about how many client and server crashes were fixed didn't start with folks generating a bunch of crash logs? And the same thing with the list of known issues. How do you think those known issues became known? Only by having some QC employee or player experience team or Evocati volunteer have it happen to them, possibly over and over again. Plus, of course, since there's known issues, there are also, obviously, unknown issues. And the real goal of Evocati is to find creative ways of discovering those. And that may involve a lot of mad scientist type. I wonder what would happen if I did this, knowing that this will very likely be unpleasant. So it might sound fun to be the first to try out refueling, but you also get to be the first to discover all sorts of less fun things, such as what happens if you're in the middle of refueling and the Starfarer captain decides to log out. What happens? Well, you'll just have to guess because I can't say because of the NDA, but the point is that you will hopefully never know because it will hopefully never happen to you, thanks to some Evocati having it happen to them over and over again. But it does feel rewarding to contribute a ticket and then later see it listed in the fixed issues. Or to make a comment on the feedback board and have one of the CIG devs agree that it should be changed. And that has been something that has been common to all the games that I have done early testing on. So if contributing that way, or really just doing something more productive than complaining on Spectrum is attractive to you, then make use of the issue council. CIG has clearly said it is the number one criteria that they use to look who to invite to Evocati. And even if you don't want to accept that invitation, it is the place most certain that whatever you want to have changed will be seen by CIG. So, let's do a walkthrough of the Issue Council. You'll find it on the main page of the RSI website under Development. Now, since I am Eva Cotti, bugs in the Evo build will be included in my view, so I'm going to have to do a fair deal of redacting here. The first screen you'll see lets you choose between issues regarding Star Citizen and issues regarding the Issue Council itself. The first thing you'll see is called a dashboard, and it contains an unfiltered list of recently opened issues. Also at the bottom of the list are two sets of boxes of the most recently fixed bugs and the most recently confirmed bugs. These are good for knowing what to avoid and that there is no particular need to further confirmation those that have already been confirmed, and what ought to be okay to do again, although sometimes it's useful to test it, just in case. On the left side are some quick filters on the bug list. Trending are recent submissions that have already been getting confirming contributions. Almost confirmed source the list by the number of extra confirming reports that are needed before the issue will be listed as confirmed. Sometimes it can be real frustrating when your bug is stuck with just one or two confirmations short of that threshold. So trying to duplicate one of these can be a real hero move. Ditto if the issue is expiring soon, presuming it is a real issue and not an issue that is a duplicate, already known, or just the way things are supposed to work. So let's say you think you have a previously unreported bug and you look through the list and haven't found it already. Note that being sure that you aren't giving a duplicate report is a very important part of actually being helpful in your use of the issue council. Don't let the ego of being the original poster of a report overtake the greater helpfulness of reporting a confirmation of an existing report. So as you type in your expected title of the issue report, the system will use the words to do a keyword search of the existing reports. So look at the search hits carefully. But it also means that you should make your report title be brief and clear enough that the next person coming along will be able to instantly recognize that your problem is their problem 
and should be confirmed rather than making a duplicate post. In my experience, the best issue titles briefly contain three things in the following order. First, what is breaking? For example, Starfare fuel pods. Second, how they are failing. Are they falling off, exploding, not spawning, contents not persisting, whatever. And if apical, when they are failing. On login, when retrieving the ship, in quantum travel, whatever. An issue title that includes those three things, if applicable, will be far more likely to get good attention and have fewer duplicates created. Now, should you include specific information in the title, such as whether a specific hangar you are at? Only if you've tested it to the point that you know that it bug is specific to that hangar. Otherwise, you'll give people the false impression that their identical problem isn't identical because it happened somewhere else. It might also give the impression that the hangar is the source of the problem when it isn't. So do you ignore that information? No, what I tend to do is include it within the parentheses in the list of steps. So for example, step one, retrieve Starfare, parentheses, I was at New Babbage, hangar 18, close parentheses. It will then ask you to confirm your device. If you haven't ever uploaded your device, you can go through the step-by-step -step questions or you can go to the search command prompt in Windows and type in dxdiag, then save all information to a file, and then upload it. This will be faster than answering all the questions, but you may think that dxdiag saves a bit too much information about your system. It will then step you through the process of selecting the settings, version, category, and severity. Then it will ask you for the steps. It is probably better to be too specific and include possibly irrelevant steps rather than run the risk of leaving out what actually is the essential step. Then it will ask you what happened, what should have happened, and whether you were able to do a workaround for it. Finally, it will ask you to upload any images or videos. Note that images and videos are not required but are obviously helpful. Do not think that you have to have visual evidence in order to have your issue taken seriously. After all, Particularly as the original experiencer of the bug, how were you to know that you had to have the camera running? Many Evocati testers just have the camera running all the time, but that's their choice. On the other hand, if you are deliberately trying to duplicate a bug, having a camera running is quite valuable. So here's some suggestions. 1. Trim your videos to just the time of the issue occurring. Nobody wants to sit through minutes of waiting just because you did. 2. Particularly if you know you are trying to duplicate a bug, Press the tilde key on your keyboard to bring up the console and then type in r underscore display info equals 3, return, r underscore display session info, return, and then use the tilde key to close the console. This will bring up a lot of very helpful information on your screen for when you send in the results. Finally, some video capture software does not play well with easy anti-cheat. For example, the Windows Game Bar does not. I use OBS Studio as it has a specific option in Game Capture to use an anti-cheat compatibility mode. Finally, the last step is submit your issue, which I am not going to do in this test example, and then back to more bug hunting. But first, an update on the Grow the Channel ship giveaway. As of recording, we are half past the subscriber goal and just shy of two-fifths of the membership goal to release to one lucky player, their choice, the Anvil Liberator, the ship shipping ship for shipping your ships, or the MISC Odyssey Long Duration Exploration Carrier. One entry per video, members are entered automatically, and if the winner is a member as of the publication date of the winning video, then they win both the Liberator and the Odyssey. For non-members, just subscribe and comment somehow, including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is any of the games that I said I've previously done early testing on. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.